So for the first one we had 15, 12, and 13, then we had 16, 12, and 13. All right, so in this video I wanted to do something different, something a little more fun. This is a personal experiment of mine that I wanted to do out of curiosity. A cheap or cost effective way to test your punching power. So the best way I'd come up with is something like along the lines of T-ball. What I went and made is I got myself a couple pieces of 2 by 4 wood, a couple little planks in between there and uh, I basically just traced the circle of this PVC pipe and then drilled some holes and sort of like knocked it out. You definitely don't want me building the deck for your backyard. But once I got that set, then I just added a piece of PVC pipe down the center and voila, there is my boxing t-ball set. I also went and purchased myself a medicine ball. This is a six pound medicine ball and uh, Nike makes sort of a soft one there so it almost has the feel of hitting a bag. In this video you're going to see me using the RDX Ego Boxing Gloves. I'm going to give you a quick review of those. I'm not sponsored by them at all. There are no affiliate links to click on or coupon codes. I'm just going to tell you straight what I think of them and if you like them then you can go get them for yourself. This test isn't the most perfectly scientific because I may hit the ball at different contact points in my punches. I may be putting in more effort in one shot than the next even though I'm trying to put my max effort. And of course there's also the direction the ball goes after I hit it. It may go on an angle and you have to account that that's more distance. And of course there's the way the ball lands. Sometimes it might not land in a way that's conducive to get it rolling. So take it with a grain of salt. It's not the most scientific but once you do it a few times it does give you a feel for what's working and what's not. Also in this video I'm swinging for the fences so technique is a bit on the back burner. I'm just trying to get the most impact with each of the punches. So what I wanted to do is test the different ranges for my hooks and here you see me throwing from short range and this is close enough where to get a straight right would be uncomfortably close so that I could probably throw uh, a rear uppercut but I'm not going to really throw uh, a straight right. And from here I felt I had good power. The average distance I was able to knock this on the football field from the zero yard line is about to about the 13 yard line. I had a couple more and a couple below but 13 yards was the average shot. Then the next one I tested was the mid range. This is sort of the sweet spot where everybody likes to be when throwing the lead hook. Not too close, not too far. My arm when throwing the lead hook is just beyond the 90 degree point so maybe like around 110 degrees or so outside of the 90 degree point. And here I had good power. Not much more power than close range but it just felt a little more solid. In the lead hook my weakest range was from long range. I stepped out a few more inches and the extension of my arm is closer to 120 degrees. It's a little bit uncomfortable, uncomfortably long. If I was to throw a straight right I would just meet the target with a few inches to go so it's not really the ideal position and I felt that in the shots that I was averaging around 12 yards with this type of hook I could feel that I was a little bit weaker. And the last one that I wanted to test on the lead hook was if I stepped through with my lead foot. Now I don't actually do this in sparring or in fights. I wouldn't advise this but sometimes when you see a fighter load up and they miss you actually see them step through. So I thought let me give this a shot to see if I get extra power. And again, it might be something that when you train it, you develop that ability to get power. But for me, it wasn't much more power than the close range or the mid range hook. I was about the same, averaging about 13 yards per shot. All right, so next I wanted to test the right hand. And with the right hand, I was averaging about 13 yards, which was a shock because I've always thought, okay, my right hand has a lot more power, but it wasn't really going much further than a lead hook. Again, this isn't the most scientific way to do it, so there might be a better test for this because I feel that my right hand is better than my lead hook but the distances that I was knocking the ball were about the same. Now one that really was noticeably different is back skipping in to my right hand and often you'll do this to feint or set up a jab and throw this. This is something that 
a technique that Rigondo does a lot to throw his power shots, power when he throws a straight left. It was sort of a back skip in. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to set it up with a jab or set it up with something to keep your opponent off guard, and you want that back skip to be short. But I definitely had more power working the back skip right hand. My average was about 18 yards. This is one thing to note about punching power. This shot definitively has more power. Now, are there any takeaways from all this? Well, one takeaway is that I was shocked that where I thought I had the most power, it wasn't really noticeably different. I thought my right hand would be killing my lead hook and they were about the same. And I thought that the mid-range lead hook would be the most powerful by far, but at close range, I was just as powerful. I also thought that stepping in with my lead hook would give me a lot more power and it didn't. Another takeaway that I can say that's very important and it's important in all sports is accuracy and making good clean contact with the target. I would recommend that we always think about power in terms of what the body can generate and that is very important, but it's also so important to hit with true precision. If you can set yourself up a sharpshooter double end bag or a small double end bag and work that, not just for your accuracy, but also putting your whole body through and seeing how well you can land those shots, that precision power is gonna go a long way towards helping your overall power. That you have to put power in the context of sport and hitting it with accuracy and hitting that sweet spot is very important. Now, just a quick review of the RDX gloves. If you go on Amazon and check out the reviews there, out of 280 some odd reviews, these gloves get about a four and a half star. And so that already tells you something right there. And I have to say that my opinion of these gloves is in line with that review. A couple things I noticed about the RDX glove, interior lining was very comfortable. So it's nice putting your hand in this glove. You're gonna feel comfort right away. I also like this sort of chunky bar here in the middle. Some gloves have it really well and some gloves don't. These RDX gloves do have this sort of nice thick bar in the middle which gives you a little bit extra grip. Another thing that these gloves have is the dual layer foam, so not as extreme for in the triple layer like a lot of the gloves have, but still really solid dual layer protection in the knuckles. This is a solid beginner to intermediate glove. Another thing about the RDX glove is the flat top and the wide base is gonna reduce impact into the bag, so they're also great for absorbing shock that way. Now another thing about these gloves that I wouldn't say is a downside, but it all depends on what you look for in a glove, is they are a bicast leather, which is a synthetic leather. Now some people like that because they don't want to use animal leather, and other people look more towards only using a genuine leather in their glove. The upside of that is it makes the gloves more affordable. The downside is if you're used to working with genuine leather and that's what you like, then they are not gonna be that. But overall, the RDX Ego Bag Gloves, a great glove for the beginner and intermediate at an excellent price. If you're interested, go check out the website for yourself. All right, I hope you had fun checking out my presentation on testing punching power. If you have any other ideas for how you'd want to test punching power, let me know and I'll see if I can put them into practice, build something, implement them somehow, just for curiosity and to see how it goes. All right, thanks for watching guys. Peace.